Hi, my name is Linda Feld, and I am Vice President of the Periodic Paralysis Association. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit about my story with periodic paralysis and how I came to find my diagnosis of hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Uh, I am di genetically diagnosed. Um, I have just recently found out my genetic uh, diagnosis through Dr. Frank Lehmann-Horn in Germany. But this has been quite a journey for me and for our family it has spanned probably about a hundred years of time. I brought some notes with me today because a hundred years is a lot of time to try to remember all in, all in your head. So I hope that you'll bear with me if I glance down once in a while. Uh, I first found out that I had something wrong with my muscles when I was born because I was born as a floppy baby. I didn't have any reflexes when I was born, so the doctors knew immediately that I had some sort of a muscle condition, but they weren't sure what it was. Uh, this was probably not too smart on their part because I had a father who also had periodic paralysis and was having a great deal of difficulty getting around already at that time. My mother had also lost a baby at birth uh, about a year before I was born, but at that time no one knew why this baby had died. Um, I had a fairly normal young childhood. I walked when I was 10 months old. Uh, they thought that I really had outgrown these problems that I had at birth. But then when I was about two or three years old, I started to have a phenomena where it looked like one leg was shorter than the other. And my mother took me to the pediatrician and he referred me to an orthopedic surgeon. And they thought that I had something wrong with my, with my bones. They thought that I was literally growing wrong so that I had a short leg and a long leg. Um, that really proved not to be the case, but by putting lifts in my shoes, they were able to make me look like I was walking right. And Again, I was just exhibiting that symptom of, uh, we kind of call it duck walking, that is so common with periodic paralysis. As a child, anytime I had a, uh, an illness, uh, especially an illness that caused a fever, I would develop weakness. And this weakness would take several weeks for me to recover from. I can remember when I was little that uh, we had a fire station very close to our house and I would like to run out with my brother and watch the fire trucks go racing up the street. And after I had one of these attacks, I was too young to, to know that I couldn't just get up and run. And I can remember vividly falling flat on my face several times trying to go watch these fire trucks run up the street. And I think that as a young child, you, you really don't know what's happening to you at that point. Um, my parents always wanted to hide what was happening to their children. Um, my father had hidden this. His parents had hidden this. Um, it, it was considered to be a, uh, a problem with your, with your family at that point. You, you didn't want to have a defective uh, genetic code. Everybody wanted to be perfect and I, since I grew up in the 1950s um, pe people just weren't ready to accept people with disability at that time. Uh, as I grew uh, the symptoms that I had changed especially when I reached puberty. Um, at puberty I started to, dev to develop extremely painful muscle cramps. Uh, this didn't happen all the time. It was usually triggered uh, by cold more than anything. Uh, thinking back, it may have also been triggered by eating a lot of sweets or carbohydrates. But these painful attacks were just off the scale as far as describing what pain is like. Doctors today use a scale of 1 to 10. Where is your pain on a scale of 1 to 10? This pain would have been 100. Uh, the doctors couldn't find anything that would take this pain away and my muscles would turn rock hard. Uh, the only thing that would help would be usually to take us to the emergency room and they would give us drugs that would practically render us unconscious. And once we fell asleep, something happened to our muscles and 
I'm sure it was that the past potassium uh, re-regulated itself in our body and the muscles started to relax in our legs and the pain started to go away. But after doing this, the weakness that we were left with lasted for six to eight weeks. I can remember many times being out of school for a lengthy period of time just trying to recover from one of these attacks. Um, I have a sister who's nine years younger than I am and she was also born with periodic paralysis and has followed almost exactly the same course I have. Uh, she also developed these painful muscle cramps when she was a teenager. But when she developed these cramps as a teenager, because nine years had gone by, medical science was starting to catch up with what might be happening in our body. And we were treated at Yale University at that time. We had a muscle biopsy done and some uh, EMGs done. And a doctor from Germany, and I always will find that quite um, just kind of a funny circumstance as the story develops. But a doctor from Germany named Dr. Huttenlocker, and I'll never forget him, uh, described to my parents that he thought that our family had periodic paralysis. And he started my sister and I on Diamox. And that was at a, in about 1970 when he started us on Diamox. Our muscle biopsies didn't show any changes. Uh, it looked like normal muscle. No vacuoles showed up and it wasn't the typical muscle biopsy that you would see with someone with periodic paralysis. Um, around the same time, uh, my sister had to have her wisdom teeth extracted and when she went in to have her wisdom teeth extracted, they, they put her to sleep. They gave her some other drugs including steroids and she walked out of the dentist's office, was perfectly okay. She went home and she sat down on the couch and my mother made her a milkshake, a nice sugary milkshake after having anesthetics with epinephrine in them and giving her steroids. And she became totally paralyzed, couldn't move anything. Uh, we had to call the paramedics to come get her and take her to the hospital. Uh, it was about that time that we knew that something was happening to our bodies that was uh, completely different than things that we had heard about happening to other people. And I think it was also at about this time that my parents started to realize that we were connected to my father, that whatever he had was something that we had too.